Hello and a warm welcome. This is the Sim Hanger channel. My name's Mark, the Sim Hanger of all things Flight Sim related. I realized the other day whenever I jump into Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is fairly regularly, a bad habit is forming. Before I jump into the world map and set myself up for a flight, I always tend to go to the marketplace and have a look at what's new. And the number of add-ons is growing by the day. And this reminded me after the initial excitement had subsided regarding Microsoft's announcement about their return to Flight Sim, the initial concerns raised regarding third-party support. Microsoft Flight Simulator has only been out for a relatively short period of time, but there's been an explosion of add-ons. And not only here in the marketplace, there's even a bigger list of payware and freeware available across multiple sites on the internet. It was no surprise to anybody that the big boys such as Aerosoft and Orbix were very quick to jump in. And for obvious reasons, this is core business. But what has surprised me is the speed at which some of the smaller developers have appeared, some of whom we've never heard of before. Pilot Plus, for example, is a small developer, having produced scenery for X-Plane, and recently brought us Wickham Air Park, one of the finest GA airports in my opinion. But I digress. What I decided to do was look for one of the smallest developers, a one-man band as it were. Have a look at what they're doing and whether or not their scenery is any good. Can they compete with the big boys? And after some research I picked on Roman Designs, who have recently released their Charlie November Charlie 3 Brampton Caledon Airport. And the price is just under £10 or $15. US dollars. Roman Designs is one man. His name is Roman Bischetsky, and unsurprisingly he lives in Canada. We've exchanged a few emails, and he told me he's not new to digital design, but this is his first foray into flight simulation. Brampton Airport is his first payware package, although from his website we can see that he has produced some freeware, which amongst others include an enhancement to Niagara Falls and to Toronto. These are freeware. So after investing 15 US dollars with Roman design, I decided to see if the small guys can compete. Let's get started. Not having flown around this part of the world in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I decided to make it more interesting and take a flight. I'm going to be departing from Niagara Falls International, as it is close to the falls, overflying Niagara Falls, then across the bay, overfly Toronto city centre and then on to Brampton Caledon. Once we've landed we can have a closer look at the airport and do a comparison to default scenery. Brampton Caledon is the only add-on scenery I'm using. All the rest is default Microsoft Flight Simulator scenery. We'll be flying today in the Diamond DA62, a twin engine. Multi-passenger aircraft, fairly quick and ideal for low-level sightseeing. We're departing Niagara Falls International Runway 28 left. It's late afternoon, some scattered clouds and a 4 knot crosswind. Just coming over 70 knots and pulling back on the control stick. And up we go. Touch the brakes and a little bit of rudder to hold us in line with the runway. End of runway, so gear up and we're at a safe altitude, so flaps up as well. Just over 6 nautical miles to Niagara Falls, so it's a very short hop. We'll fly over the falls before turning north and heading towards Toronto City. I'm going to be cruising at 1500 feet, so we've just reached cruise. And here are the falls. The default scenery is okay, but I was expecting something a little bit more dramatic. Perhaps I'll try Roman Designs, Niagara Falls the Enhancement Pack. Now turning north, heading out over the bay towards Toronto. And I'll be aiming for a cruise speed of around about 150 knots. If it gets a little bumpy, well we'll slow that down to about 135-145 knots.
This aircraft is Diamond's DA-62, DA standing for Diamond Aircraft. Six is the number of people that the aircraft can accommodate, and two is the number of engines, thus the DA-62. We're now over the bay and Toronto dead ahead. I've obviously shortened the flight time for the purposes of this video. Crossing the bay at this speed normally takes 15-20 minutes. As we fly over the city centre we're going to maintain a more or less northerly direction and fly over Toronto Pearson International. Not a strictly legal route in terms of aviation but hey that's the beauty of simming. The airport below us right now well that's Billy Bishop, Charlie Yankee, Tango Zulu. We're going to be maintaining our altitude of 1,500 feet all the way to Brampton Airport. We're going to be joining a left-hand traffic pattern almost directly onto the base leg in preparation for a left-hand turn to runway 26. Winds are currently 6 knots at 280 degrees. I've never been to Toronto, but I certainly would like to visit one day. A friend of mine lives there and he says, wow, it can really snow. Mind you, I suppose that applies to the whole of Canada. Now overhead, Pearson International. And for default scenery, this is very impressive indeed. Look at the traffic on the motorways. Not far to go now and we'll be able to have a look at Brampton Caledon Airport. Now entering a traffic pattern with an extended base leg. Before a left hand turn to runway 26 and it's time to put the gear down and first stage of flaps. Now on final and lining up with runway 26. Flaps down and 80 knots. We're landing at the shorter of the two runways available at Brampton. A little bit too much flare from me there, but hey, we're down. Gently applying the brakes so we can take this off ramp. Then we'll taxi to parking and take a look at the airport. It's late afternoon and the light is starting to fade quite quickly now. And whilst we park, let's turn our attention back to the main point of this video. Microsoft Flight Simulator has ushered in a new era of flight simulation. And with that has come a new batch of add-on developers. Some of whom are brand new to the flight sim world, like Roman Designs. In my experience, the flight sim community is fairly demanding in terms of quality. And ongoing support is of paramount importance. 
So what can we expect from the smaller and newer developers? And can they keep up with the more established and bigger developers on the scene? Before purchasing something like an airport, for example, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, because their base scenery is so much better than what we've had before, my first step with Microsoft Flight Simulator is always a comparison to the default scenery. Let's have a quick look at Charlie November Charlie 3. Before purchasing software from an unknown developer, I always go and visit their website. The level of information and detail within that website gives you an indication of the commitment by the developer. There were one or two developers that I veered away from, simply because their website just didn't provide much detail. However, in the case of Roman Designs, well, there's all the detail you need. A lot of time and attention had been paid. Navigation is fairly simple and straightforward and to some degree reminded me of the excellent Pilot Plus website. My only comment being that my antivirus software didn't like their download site. An ongoing commitment to upgrade and support the product of course is very important. More so in Microsoft Flight Simulator than perhaps other sims simply because of the number of upgrades we're currently getting. How many of us in the past have purchased something only to be left behind with an upgrade? Fly Inside's VR application a case in point. There's an undoubted level of comfort in dealing with companies such as Orbix or Aerosoft when it comes to access for support. Interestingly, the developer we're talking about today has already updated his product to take account of various patches and upgrades from Microsoft Flight Simulator. The proof of the pudding's in the eating, as they say, so let's take a look at Brampton Caledon. The airport sports two runways. The developer advised he had done a few minor mesh changes to sort out a few anomalies. Microsoft Flight Simulator has opened up a whole new world of detail for flight simmers. And this in my case has made me more demanding I think in terms of detail, especially at airports. It's the detail that adds to the immersion. And again the value in a regional airport such as this lies in authenticity and whether or not you'll use the airport on an occasional or frequent basis. A busy apron is great to see. The one thing I did notice is this airport really has some airport life about it. And I enjoy details such as the animated flag and readable signage. So whilst we continue to have a look at Roman Designs Brampton Caledon Airport, you can see the details for yourself and make your own judgment. But let me give you my final conclusions. As this is Roman Bashetsky's first airport, I think he can take some pride in what has been produced. For £10 or fifteen US dollars, I think it represents reasonable value for money. And the more quality products we see at these sort of price points will just hold price points for Microsoft Flight Simulator add-ons in check. I would argue that Microsoft Flight Simulator appeals to a larger user base than previous sims and based on a simple supply and demand scenario prices should remain competitive. Overall I'd give this airport 7.5 out of 10. Therefore it falls into my recommended category as I feel there are still a number of opportunities for improvement. Those props for example seem to be static and turning. Not sure if it's the scenery or my system. And I would like to see a little bit more wear and tear on some of the buildings and perhaps a few cracks or oil marks along the apron. This developer has clearly paid some considerable attention to detail. And as a new developer, well, it just holds bright prospects for what we can expect to see in the future and future upgrades. So in summary, it looks like the little guys are really competing. This can only be good for simmers overall. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this useful and informative. See you again soon. Take care and bye for now.